Okay, hi folks. Last time I said we will show you how to take the Ember Pi into operation. For this purpose we need the Ember Pi design kit and this little manual. And I'll go through with you the steps 1 to 10. It's quite easy. Start off with step 1. And in fact I've typed in already. The first page we'd like to address is the www.ember-wireless.com slash en slash ember-pi.html. Unload this, or download it to your local drive or your desktop. Wait a while, have a cup of coffee. Once you've done that, there's a second step. Go to raspberrypi.org. I'll show that in the bottom link as well. And go to the Raspbian Stretch with desktop and download this zip, as can be seen on the monitor as well. Right. Now I have a big cup of coffee because it's going to take some time. Download it and subsequently unzip it. We suggest using 7-zip, which can be downloaded as well from the very same page. Here's the link. And once you've done that, you've got all the information which you need to work with. The third one would be, if you require then, a software to actually program all of this onto the SD card which we need for the Raspberry Pi. Right, okay, friends, we've done step one. Step two, set up the components. It's all described there. Connect the mouse, the keyboard, and the monitor. Right, I've got my Raspberry Pi. I'll connect the mouse and the keyboard. I'll connect my monitor. And very important, I need the SD card, which I've just flashed previously. I'll insert that underneath in the SD card. Right, there we are. And last thing, we need the power supply, the 2 amp power supply. I'll plug that into our mini USB. And with a bit of luck, it should start running. Let's have a look. Yeah, first things first, go and disenable the Bluetooth, which is the button at the top here. And at the same time, enable the internet. Okay, friends, we've disenabled the Bluetooth, enabled the internet, and next thing, go to our terminal and start the terminal program, which I have here. Once in the terminal program, we have two things we need to do, which is the sudo apt-get update. And once that is done, you do an apt-get upgrade. Right, the Raspberry Pi seems to be running fine. There's one more thing we should do. Point number four, configuration of peripherals. And for that, we go to the top here, and we go to Preferences, and to Raspberry Pi Configuration, which is at the bottom here. Right, under Interfaces, there are two flags we need to set. Make sure that the SPI is enabled, as well as the I2C is enabled. The Serial Output, or Serial Interface, should be enabled as well. Press OK, accept that. And that should be done for point number two. Reboot the system. After the reboot, open the file boot slash command.txt by typing in the terminal sudo leafpad slash boot slash commandline.txt. Remove the string console equals serial 0, 0,1152 and save the file. Now open the file config.txt by typing in the terminal sudo leafpad slash boot slash config.txt. Check for the string enable underscore uart equals 1 and add it if not existent. Once again save the file and proceed with the reboot. Right, the next is step number 5, assessing the Raspberry Pi peripherals. First check if the wiring Pi is already installed by typing the following code into the terminal the GPIO minus V. If a version number occurs, then you're well done and you can actually proceed straight ahead to step number six. Install the code blocks development environment by typing into the terminal the sudo apt minus get install code blocks. Now this is your uh, development environment you're going to work with. I'll show you below. This is how you start code blocks. Right folks, after having installed code blocks, Go to point number seven. Install the Ember Pi driver. Download the Ember Pi project from Ember Wireless. You'll see it in the manual. 
into your downloads directory. Create a project directory by typing make dir tilde projects, unzip and download the amber pie into the project directory by typing unzip tilde downloads slash amber pie dot zip space d and then into your projects directory which you've created. Right, we're just about done. Start the project via code blocks and this would be the process. Code blocks would be running. Go into the top and open the linker settings in code blocks by clicking on settings, compiler linker settings. Add the library slash usr slash lib slash lib wiring pi dot so to the libraries field. Close the linker settings. Rebuild the project via clicking on to build and rebuild. If building runs without errors, the Amber Pi has been installed correctly and this would take us to the next step. Step number eight, uh, the Amber Pi hardware. And now I'll show you quickly how to actually plug the Amber Pi onto the Raspberry Pi. Make sure the sensors are all available and connected. Shut down the Raspberry Pi and connect the Amber Pi. Step number nine, this would then run the application. Once again, I'll show you the code. You start code blocks and we go to projects amber pi, amber pi dot workspace with an and and run the projects by clicking on build and run. Okay folks, we've got our system running. Let's go and look on our remote little laptop and see what is happening. You need to connect the amber USB stick first of all to the remote laptop. Connect the terminal program. You should be able to see the received data from the Amber Pi. Folks, have fun experimenting with your RF module, the Amber Pi. Stay tuned. <laughs>